I'm Alex Feathersby and this is my web series review for Couplish. Couplish is an original mixed style series about a pair of roommates, Dee and Rachel, who pretend to be a couple in order to keep Rachel from being deported back to England. Some things that I really liked about Couplish, I actually liked the mixing of the style. So a lot of the series is in TV style, but part of how Rachel and Dee present themselves as a couple to fool the government is by creating a vlog channel at the suggestion of Dee's sibling Amy. I really liked the meta element of that. We see the vlogs and we know they're pretending, but obviously because they're all acting, it's not real life on the show, they're acting anyway, so it has a lot of layers. And and it's also just really interesting to see the characters acting out their feelings and seeing how that bleeds into this charade that they've put on. I also really liked the fact that Dee, who I would argue is the main character of this web series, or at least one of the few main characters, is a non-binary person. Specifically that it plays a lot into Dee's character. The way that they talk about things, the way they react to certain situations, a lot of it has to do with their gender and the fact that in past relationships their gender was not respected, that their gender is a point of contention among their family members. But one thing that I feel a lot of LGBT web series sort of miss is the fact that when you're an LGBTQ person living in the world, it does have an effect on how your life is. It affects what your friendships are like, what your relationships with your family are like. And I feel like there's been a lot of pressure to write LGBT characters as if it's just another trait such as being blonde or having a certain eye color but our identities do have power and they affect how we move about the world and they affect how people treat us so I really liked that D being non-binary did have an effect on certain things why they happened how people treated them and how they felt about certain things that happened over the course of the web series so I thought that was really well done I also really liked the concept of taking a very rom-com classic cliche fic trope which is the two people have to pretend to be in a relationship and sort of turning it on its head to make it more queer to make it more of a twist in terms of complications with sexuality so I really liked that and I think the concept was really great my favorite character in this web series was Dee's sibling Amy. She's played by Mercedes Morris and I loved Amy's character because she's fun. She kind of comes up with a lot of the zany um, actions and schemes of the web series. It's her idea to do the vlog channel. It's arguably her that suggests that they pretend to be a couple so that Rachel can stay in the country. She's not just some random roommate that you don't get along with. Amy's really close to her and so it would really help both of us out if you were to pretend to be her partner. Amy as a character is very complex. She and Dee as siblings who are adopted come from the same family structure but they respond to things in very different ways. Amy's capable of being a very supportive sibling to Dee without losing that sort of party girl impulsive and maybe a little commitment phobic part of her. Some things that I didn't like about this web series. I felt that in the second season, the use of the vlog channels definitely is less frequent. And I feel that there were some opportunities specifically with, uh, this is a big spoiler, so I'm gonna put where to skip to if you haven't watched the second season, you don't want to be spoiled. So in the second season, Rachel and Dee announce that they're getting married. That's the last vlog that we really see until the very last episode is that announcement. And I feel that there was a lot of opportunity to show how the wedding planning and how vlogging that would have really added some tension and added another layer to the having to perform and having to make it seem like everything was fine. Because then I felt that the final episode where they're showing on video, hey, turns out this isn't going to go the way you, our viewers, thought it would. We're actually not in a relationship. There is relationship configurations that you as the audience weren't expecting. I think that almost creating sort of a documentary of the wedding planning because there is a big push in a lot of YouTube communities with a lot of couple vlogs for people to videotape 
the whole process of getting married and why they decided to get married and all this drama and there could have been an opportunity to have Dee's mom on the couple channel and see all of the craziness that comes from that. Including the vlogs within the filming style was a really great choice and so it was kind of disappointing to see them pull back from that as much as they did. I think that also watching the pilot episode, we don't really have a clear idea of the dynamic between Dee and Rachel before the bomb drops and we realize that Rachel has told the government Dee is her partner. We don't really have a clear idea of what their dynamic is before that, so I felt like the setup wasn't super strong. Okay, if they don't like each other and they don't get along, why on earth would Dee go along with it? And we didn't really get any type of answer to that until the second season, but then you just spend the whole first season wondering what exactly the setup is. If we'd seen some sort of sexual tension or complexity in the relationship beforehand, before that bomb drops and the whole thing is flipped on its head, then I think that would have been a much stronger opening to this series. Finally, I think that the biggest issue I had with this web series is that in a lot of ways there was a lack of consistency between the first and the second season. The first season ends with a really dramatic turnaround of emotions and something that completely upsets the dynamic between all three of the main characters if you consider Dee, Amy, and Rachel the main. It wasn't given the time that it deserved in the second season. It's not even explained remotely until about halfway through. And even then, it's just a one-off conversation that doesn't explain why this happened and where these feelings were coming from and why those feelings suddenly went away. I think going from a really high emotional place to suddenly being treated as if the event doesn't matter or that they've moved on from the event when your audience clearly hasn't because we have no idea how everything was processed, that lack of consistency really harmed a lot of people's view of the series within the second season. A lot of the comments I saw on each episode was just talking about but why did this happen? How did we get from that place to this place? What happened in the middle? How did we process these feelings? And having all of that happen off screen resulted in characterization looking a lot less consistent. Another element that pops up in season two, another character is added to the mix and further complicates the situation. It seemed very odd that two characters who have only recently met would have such strong feelings for each other and would create such a dramatic conflict over this situation when the huge emotional and dramatic plot change from the first season hasn't we never even saw that work through so it felt a lot I guess like they were replacing one conflict with another and we didn't really have a full processing through of the first conflict before we're suddenly off to a new place with new characters and new drama yeah so that was just how I personally felt about it. I would watch this web series if you are really into classic rom-com tropes and you really are looking for a new twist on that. Maybe you're looking for them to be more LGBT inclusive. This is a great web series if you're really into those sort of things. If you sort of get into the whole ship war thing, so you're really into who's this character gonna end up with, like on Glee where everybody's switching partners more often than square dancers do. If you're really into that sort of thing, then and this would be a good web series for you. There's a lot of contention, especially between first and second season, about who characters should end up with and who characters maybe have feelings for each other. If you also are really looking for a show that has a non-binary main character, especially in terms of seeing that play out in their lives and seeing how that affects the plot, then this is a really great web series for that. A lot of web series I watch that have non-binary characters usually have them as side characters, so we don't really get to see how living in a world where gender is accepted as binary and not as a constellation of options really affects somebody who doesn't identify that way. So if you're really looking for a main character who gets to be complex, who gets to have a lot of different traits, but also whose identity does affect how they move about in the world, then this is a really great web series for you. I would skip this series if you're uncomfortable with a lot of sex talk, a lot of on-screen kissing, a lot of PDA. If you're looking for something 
something that maybe is less rom com -y and those things make you very uncomfortable, then this probably isn't the web series for you. If you prefer stories that are set within a college or a high school setting instead of with adults who have moved out of their parent families' homes and who are starting their own lives and figuring out what they want to do with their careers, then this probably isn't a web series for you. And finally, if you prefer a strict vlog style series or a TV series over a mix style, you don't really like the constant switching back and forth of perspective, you'd rather be in a singular role, then this isn't the web series for you. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. If you have differing opinions about this web series, you can of course post them in the comments. And if you have recommendations for me, you can either comment that here or you can go to my Tumblr and send me a message. Have a nice day.